What is up, everybody, and welcome to Five Good Ones. I'm your host, stand-up comedian, actor, all-around badass, Joe Kilgallen. Very excited for this episode. This is a brand new series I'm doing here in which I'm talking to uh, mostly comedians, but some actors, maybe some musicians. Hell, I might even talk to a garbage man. Let's get weird with it, right? In which I ask them five good questions. It's up to you to decide if they're good. They might be shit. We'll find out. We'll discover. Uh, my guest today is one of the funniest comedians in the country. No bullshit. I'm not just saying that because I'm hyping my guests. I'm trying to get you, the viewer, to be excited. Look her up. Look up her stuff. Everyone who sees her says it. She's going to be mad at me for kissing her ass right now. She'll probably call me names that I can't repeat on the air later. But I don't give a fuck. I, I got to hit you with that truth. Uh, everyone, let's welcome the one and only Kristen Toomey. Hello. What Hi. up, Toomey? Hi, Hi, honey. Cool. How are you? I'm Thanks good. Thanks for that we... intro. My goodness. Well, it's the truth. I'm not lying. Thank you. you. You have been kicking ass. You've been killing it. I'm very happy to have you on. You're someone who I always love having conversations with. You always bum me a smoke. I probably owe you cartons. Uh, <laughs> you're just a wonderful person, Tombs. <laughs> Five good ones. Let's lead off. Standard question. I love to ask it, though. What has been your favorite moment of your stand-up comedy career? Well... One of the best was um, my best friend that I grew up with, who's no longer with us. She was an inmate in the female prison, and I got to perform at the female prison for her. She was in the front row. Oh, that's and awesome. I got a standing ovation, my first standing ovation. And um, that was a very emotional, beautiful moment, but fucked up at the same time. Um, so that's one of them. And um, performing at the Chicago Theater was like a bucket list venue growing up in Chicago, that iconic marquee. And oh, yeah. just the ven I signed the wall by Prince and um, that was really cool. Who'd you and, work with there? Um, I opened for the Impractical Jokers and Burt Kreischer, Kyle Kinane texted me and was like, you wanna do a spot tonight? And I was like, yeah, and he's like, it was like at 2 p.m. And then he's like, okay, it's at 7 at the Chicago Theater. And I'm like, what? And I just raced there. And then I had to go out on the stage. It's so massive. And the microphone, there's like no music. And the microphone is so far. And they announced my name. And I just thought that's such a slow walk for, they don't know who I am. That's a slow walk out there. And so I just took off running and I ran, I ran to the microphone as quick as I could. As I oh, could that's get there awesome. Yeah. yeah. So that, those were, you know, two big ones. Um, I don't know. What about you? Am I no, I mean, those, those two are incredible. Um, see about me, I was going to wait until like episode 10 of this and have someone, maybe you will come back on and you could ask me five good ones. Okay. okay. So yeah. I'm teasing the viewer I'll a little wait. bit here. Um, all right. those, those are perfect. Um, all right, question number two. This is based off of one of my favorite stand-up comedy jokes you have. Uh, a comedian friend of mine said, hey, you should ask her this. And uh, the question is, let me get the wording right on this, because you have this, God, it's a killer bit, and I'm going to play it now. Do worry about what I'm saying to my kids, because I know what you say to them really matters. I remember being eight, and my dad said to me in passing conversation, Whores wear chip nail polish. <laughs> that was the whole sentence. And I grew up being like, whore, whore. <laughs> he doesn't even remember saying it. I think about it every day. I was driving the other day and I looked down and it was chipped and I was like, I gotta get home. <laughs> I'm just gonna start sucking a dick right now if I don't get home. It's the first dick I see, I'm gonna suck that dick. I was playing with it, I was like, you dirty bitch. Put your gloves on. Out here embarrassing your family. Your dad said chip nails are for whores. Like whores have chip nails. Yeah. Since I've heard that joke, anytime I've seen a woman with chip nails, I think about that joke and I think, probably a whore. <laughs> Not really though. But uh but then I have a comedian friend who I'm, I'm you probably know too, really funny uh comedian in Chicago, up and coming comedian, Kaylee Horton. Yeah. She, I was doing a show with her not that long ago, and she was like, Oh no, Kristen Toomey's dad's gonna think I'm a whore. <laughs> <laughs> so uh what are other ways 
in which one can spot a whore? Well, just full disclosure, I am actually going through some sort of like um, exposure therapy on the chip nails myself because I currently have chip nails. Um, and inside. it's driving me kind of nuts, but I'm letting it happen. I'm embracing it and I'm, um, working through that. But, uh, what else makes a woman a whore or look to be like slutty or. Yeah. yeah basically. I don't know. I was just, I just wanted to share that awesome well, joke. Okay. My dad has another one that stuck with me that I don't say in the joke, but it's walking and smoking at the same time. That makes you a whore walking if, and smoking. Yeah. If you walk and smoke at the same time, like walk, you can't walk down the street and smoke. You have to stop and smoke if you're going to smoke. Well, because they're kind of like a whore on the go then. They're, right. they're on their way to another John, you know? <laughs> so that's this, maybe something walking and smoking. Um, I guess that would apply to vaping as well. And then another whorish thing people look. I guess uh, an old school one is if you have a tear in your tights, in your pantyhose, your or tights are ripped. Mm. That was a big one back in the day. How come people don't call them nylons anymore? I remember when I was a kid, they referred to them as nylons. Like, oh, a woman's wearing nylons. I don't hear that anymore. Yeah, you're right. Um, I think Spanx kind of took over as being like, you know, um, that. I don't know. I don't like when women call them tights. Tights? I don't like that because it's like what a little girl would wear, would wear tights. So when a grown woman says tights, it makes me go, mm, no. <laughs> I say tights. Yeah. Um, but imagine a man being like, hey, let me take off your tights. You'd be like, gross, dude. <laughs> yeah. like that. What's wrong with you? I'd probably be like that anyways, but yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> I'm a woman's fashion expert is my point. Yeah. I, I don't know what you should call them. I what should you Listeners, call them if you don't call them know. tights? Nylons? I like pantyhose. Pantyhose has some kind nylons, of nylons, like, you sound 65 years old. I do. You sound old with nylons. Tight sounds too young. So I think I'm going to go with pantyhose. You got to run pantyhose. into pantyhose. Pantyhose? It's fun. Say it without smiling. I bet you can't. I don't like panty. Oh, so you don't like when people call women's underwear panties? No. Yeah, Ugh. I guess I can see that. So you just call them underwear? Or do you call Underwear. Them Underwear. Underwear. Spare Underwear. Plates. All right. This next question is coming from a viewer. So if you're watching right now, feel free to submit some questions that you might have for different people. Uh, must be a fan of yours because they know a little bit of your backstory. The question is, what famous person or historical figure you'd break sob your sobriety for? Like, who would you break your sobriety for? Like, where you're like, you know what? I got to get drunk with this person. And that is from Harry Nuts McGee from Pittsburgh. Son of a bitch. I got duped. Anyhow, so... <laughs> um, who would I break my sobriety for? Well, it would have to be Jesus Christ, honestly. I wouldn't do it for any celebrity or anything. I feel like, you know what? Or maybe somebody that I really don't like, because I feel like being around, you've been around drunk me. It's not fun. And I wouldn't want to be drunk in front of somebody that I admire ever. Maybe. That's a great answer. And that's something that I hope people who, you know, don't quite get how addiction could be, could then that opens their eyes a little bit. Like if you know, someone you admire, you would never want them to see you drunk. Right. Jesus is kind of fun one though. Right. You know, you well, he's going to love wine. me anyway. <laughs> he's going to forgive you anyway. Right. So you can say all the bad things and he's going to forgive you. Right. And it's cheap because he's got the wine on the ready. Uh, right. So that's good to know. Yeah. I will say this, Kristen, uh, you, I, you were around me drunk once and I enjoyed your company. I'm not saying I want you to drink anymore. I'm so happy you you're, I'm so proud of you and Thank so happy you. for you, but I'm bringing this up for the sake that I think it might make you laugh. Cause I don't think you remember it. The, it might've been the only time you were ever drunk around me, but you were telling me that I need to wear a backwards hat more. I stand by that. Actually. I think that you look very good in a backwards hat and it, it suits your vibe. Thank it you. young you up a little bit. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll rock a backwards hat again. I've been going yeah. through some hats and I can Especially bring it on backwards. stage. Try it. I did. You know, I had a moment or two I was wearing one because I think I had it on. And I remember you just being like, only wear a backwards hat. 
And I was just like, all the time? She, you're like, always. Yeah. And you were very adamant. So I remember being like, I think I should listen to her. Show me yeah. Well, Make you didn't. Okay. Question number four. This might take a little time. This is a good question, though. I feel like a lot of people have probably thought about at some point randomly in their lives. What would be your last meal? Well, since it's my last meal, that means I could eat gluten again <laughs> and dairy and all the things that I and sugar and all the things I don't eat anymore. So I would probably get a loaf of sourdough bread um, and then an Italian beef from Portillo's, but not Portillo's now, Portillo's like 10 years ago for a change um, with extra jardinier, a side of sport peppers, a side of pickle spears, a large fry, a Coke, and then I would have... Um, Chocolate dessert. Cake. Chocolate, Chocolate cake. cake. Are you dipping those fries in some nacho cheese? No. no I like the cheese fries there. Really I don't good. like the cheese. Um, okay. I don't like the cheese on the fries. I like it in, um, if I'd use anything on the fries, it would be open pit mixed with hot sauce, like a spicy barbecue sauce. Dipping your fries in barbecue sauce is so underrated. Yeah. I mean, I, I'll do it. The McDonald's barbecue sauce is good for this, but yeah, barbecue yeah. sauce and French fries very Port underrated. Yeah, and a spicy. I like a spicy barbecue sauce. Another question that when I talked to some people that I told them I was going to interview you for this podcast, they were curious about, and it kind of applies to me too. But I really want you to answer. I do enough talking. All right, question number five. Five good ones. Final question: How do you handle the responsibilities of parenthood? while being a stand-up comedian, and how does that influence your comedy? Well, um, nowadays, thankfully, um, my kids are pretty, I mean, they're gonna be 20 and 16, so they're older, you know what I mean? So the day-to-day, -day, you know, I'm not, I'm not putting their shoes on 10 times while they're kicking them off anymore. I'm not doing, you know, their homework. I, I am keeping track of the homework on the app and making sure that gets done. But really, there's a lot less to do now. But when I was younger, um, and they were young, that was really a challenge, you know, it was, it's a lot. Um, it's a lot to stay home with young children. You don't get any time alone. You have to wait till they go to bed. Um, I remember I would be with them and I would see my husband pull in the driveway and I would think, oh, thank God. It's like the Calvary has arrived, like just someone to, you know, and then I would be able to go and, and do a show. And that was a great, um, a great time, you know, in my you're life. Your reward. I had something similar. It was really hard during the pandemic because before the pandemic, like, you know, there was no comedy going on. So I had the same thing. When my wife's car would pull up, I'm like, yes, I've got help has arrived. I, a little bit of stress is taken off of me. And then I'd go out and do a show. And then you get to be an adult. You get to be a, the other half of you, right? As a person, yeah. not just a mom and not just a dad yeah. in my case. So when that was gone during the pandemic, that's when my mental health was really suffering. You know what I mean? The first wave of it, it didn't really bother me as much because in my brain, I'm like, we're all grounded. Then things open back up briefly and then things shut back down again. And when things shut back down again, it was hard because I'm like, I can't just do this all day and not get that escape at night, that release at night, doing the thing I love the most to do. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it was like short circuiting my fucking head. It's going nuts. Yeah. And, you know, <clears throat> for me, I feel like um, back then I was definitely struggling with addiction as well as a, as a self-medicating with that stress and all of that so when i was able to get out of the house it was like you know i mean it was kind of me trying to be this mom this mom that i thought i should be you know and act this certain way and then it was like really repressing all of my you know even the way that i was raised i was trying not to duplicate so i was really just um pushing a lot down. And then when I would go out at night, it would sort of just be like, 
you know, I'm like on stage, it was very like a lot of anger and a lot of, you know, rage at times. It was very intense. And I think that was just my only outlet, you know, when you only have a couple of hours a week or whatever it is to get your whole, to kind of balance out what you're doing during the day. I mean, it wasn't really healthy. And so I didn't really know, I wasn't very good at balancing the things that, um, but also being 20 something and in my, into my thirties, you know, all my friends, I was the first one to get married. I was the first one to have kids and they're all doing that stuff now. And I'm like, my kids are growing up, you know, they're big. And um, so it's interesting. It's, you know, um, I'm glad that I had children when I did at the time I thought, you know, this is, I'm young for this to be happening, but uh, it really, you know, it's how everything happens, how it's supposed to happen. I think, you know? Yeah. You know, I, I find myself agreeing with that more often than not. I really do. Yeah. And, and think about the benefits you have now, because, you know, if you were, you know, not married and didn't have kids in your twenties, you, maybe there's a small part of you that thought, Oh, I probably could have been a little bit further along, but then again, you might've gotten into more trouble, been more, you know, Oh, I've got all the time in the world and not worked as hard, but then having a family, it kind of makes you understand how to prioritize your time. So you work smarter instead of just, you know, harder, mm -hmm. but harder and smarter. And now your kids are 20 and 16. They're independent. Yeah. Of course you're still there for them as a mom and everything like that, but now you could really do some things and you're better and people like comedian. That's the best part about being a stand-up comedian to me. I mean, there's a lot of great parts, but our prime is like our forties. It's not twenties. Musicians do their best shit in their twenties, maybe early thirties. But I feel like all my favorite comedians, their best work, they put out like mid forties, even mid fifties. Sometimes we've got, cause when we get more life experience, we get more cool shit to talk about mm -hmm. and we just become better. Well, and that's the thing. I feel like when you get success really young, and no matter what field you're in, I think it kind of can stunt you as a as stunt your development as a human being. And, you know, the good thing about like comedy, like you're saying, is we can do this into our, you know, 90s, honestly. So the more we grow as a person, the better we're going to become. If we stay stagnant, our act will be stagnant and it'll suck. Yeah. You know what I mean? 100 so, percent. yeah yeah you got to keep growing keep adapting that, yes i tell comedians to go live a life worth talking about that's yeah. my phrase i mean I've heard, that's been passed down from way better comedians to me to hopefully the next wave and all that kind of good stuff well kristen to me thank you so much for joining the podcast and answering thank five you. good ones i hope you had fun let everyone know where they can see you well you can find me on instagram and um I have shows around Chicago, but you should always watch the Comedians You Should Know page because I'm there probably every six weeks or so. It's the best show in Chicago and it's my favorite. And I feel like I can always try new stuff and, and be boldest in that room. So if you're going to see me, you should see me in that room. Thank you so much, everyone. Check out Kristen Toomey on Instagram. You just type in Kristen Toomey, it'll pop up. She's got so many funny videos on there. So definitely Thank watch you. and support her. And Thanks. check her out when she comes to a town near you. You've been going all the way across the country these last six, or six to eight months or so. So definitely check out Toomey when she's in a city near you. All right. Thanks for watching, everyone. Cheers.